From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. These are the Cybersecurity Headlines for Monday, June 10th, 2024. I'm Steve Prentice. Microsoft resets recall plans. Following up on a story that dogged the industry last week, Microsoft announced on Friday that its new feature, Recall, will not be released as active by default, but will instead be an opt-in feature. Recall, which had been designed as a visual timeline, capturing screenshots of users' screens every five seconds to be analyzed and parsed later, was immediately decried by security experts for its potential as a gaping security lapse, with Wired's Andy Greenberg going so far as to call it, quote, unrequested pre-installed spyware, end quote. Microsoft has responded by pointing out Recall's security features and how a user remains in total control of its functionality. Researcher Kevin Beaumont, whose warnings were instrumental in getting Microsoft to change course on the product, did add later, quote, There are obviously going to be devils in the details, but there's some good elements here. Microsoft needs to commit to not trying to sneak users to enable it in the future. End quote. LastPass says 12-hour outage caused by bad Chrome extension update. According to representatives from the company, an outage that occurred on Thursday was a result of, quote, a bad update to its Google Chrome extension, end quote, which put too much stress on its servers. This left users with a 404 not found message when attempting to access their last pass accounts, even in offline mode. The problems for users started after LastPass launched an update on June 6th. Lawrence Abrams, writing in Bleeping Computer, suggests that, quote, the extension was creating too many requests, essentially DDoSing the platform, end quote. New York Times source code stolen using exposed GitHub token. Basically, all source code belonging to the New York Times company, 270 gigabytes. That was the ad headline placed on a 4chan forum post referring to data stolen from the company's GitHub repositories in January of this year. This stolen data included, quote, IT documentation, infrastructure tools and source code allegedly including the viral Wordle game, end quote. The Times itself, in a statement, described this event as when a credential to a cloud-based third-party code platform was inadvertently made available, end quote. And now, a word from our sponsor, Vanta. Whether you're starting or scaling your security program, Vanta helps you automate compliance across frameworks like SOC 2, ISO 27001, and more. With Vanta, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with a customer-facing trust center. Over 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security. Our listeners get $1,000 off at vanta.com slash headlines. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash headlines. Angry Club Penguin Hackers Allegedly Steal Disney Data 4chan was not only the site of the New York Times data breach, it also hosted a link to internal Club Penguin PDFs, a breached file that not only contained old information about Club Penguin, the popular multiplayer online game that was shuttered in 2017, but also contained information from as recently as this month about Disney+, Plus, corporate strategies, advertising plans, links to Disney's internal websites and its internal developer tools Helios and Communicore, all allegedly stored on Disney's Confluence server. iCare management services company Panorama announces breach. Colorado-based Panorama iCare owns or provides services to dozens of optometry or ophthalmology offices in the Rocky Mountain region. Its systems manage IT departments, HR, payroll, marketing, and capital improvements for equipment and facilities. In a report submitted to regulators in Maine and Massachusetts, it disclosed that a cyber attack happened in June 2023, resulting in the theft of PII and some financial and medical information of almost 378,000 current and former patients and employees. The company did not mention whether the event was a ransomware attack. However, last July, the now-defunct Lockbit gang claimed credit for the attack. 
expert warns of Akira as the next big thing in ransomware. The director of cyber threat intelligence at Tidal Cyber, Scott Small, has stated in an interview that although Akira's activity is currently low key, its crew are quote very much a skilled group end quote. The organization, spelt A K I R A, uses tools that are less commonly deployed by other groups, such as using FTP to exfiltrate files, and they also like to pursue smaller organizations with the goal of using them to access larger targets. Small warns, quote, the gang's intent and capability should get the attention of CSOs, end quote. PHP vulnerability a threat to Windows servers. According to security researcher Orange Tsai at Taiwan-based DevCore, this new critical security flaw impacting PHP could be exploited to achieve remote code execution under certain circumstances. The vulnerability, which has a CVE number, is being described as quote a CGI argument injection vulnerability affecting all versions of PHP installed on the Windows operating system. End quote. Although a fix has been made available, DevCore warns that all XAMPP installations, that is XAMPP, on Windows are vulnerable by default when configured to use the locales for traditional Chinese, simplified Chinese, or Japanese. The company also recommends that administrators move away from the outdated PHP CGI altogether and opt for a more secure solution, such as Mod PHP, Fast CGI, or PHP FPM. This story, by the way, is not the same one as the Think PMP vulnerability that we reported on on Friday. Managing risk is one of the primary tools of cybersecurity, so that's why improving how we talk about risk is so imperative. That's why we are devoting this week's Super Cyber Friday to hacking the conversation about risk. A cybersecurity pro that can elevate risk conversation with the business stands a much better chance of improving their security posture. We just posted a preview video of this conversation over at CISOseries.com. Check it out, and then be sure to head on over to our events page to register to join us for the live stream at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on Friday. We always answer tons of questions from our audience and play fun games with prizes. So be sure to join us this Friday. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.